We head for the sky, it's all right. Our wings wouldn't fly, it's all right. Good morning. All right. It's 6.20. I'm going in to do external DCR, at least for the first case. And do as many plastics cases as I can before I have to go to the pediatrics clinic. And uh, then we'll do strap cases and retina clinic and then in the afternoon general clinic and glaucoma clinic. So I'll take you guys along. Let's go. Yeah, tell me what you want. Then me I'm the only one. You know that we won't make it out. We've heard it all before. It's all Okay, just got to the OSC, which is the outpatient surgery center. We have all these different places we operate. We do the ambulatory surgery center, the outpatient surgery center. We operate at Children's. We sometimes operate at the main uh, hospital uh, at Parkland. We'll operate at the main hospital at Clements, and that's just here on the main campus. And then other times we'll go all the way out to Fort Worth and operate, and then we're down at the VA. We're all over the place. Um, but anyways, so we're gonna go in. The first case, the DCR, st doesn't start for like 30 minutes. Just gonna review it real quick in the um, the NERAD uh, Techniques of Ophthalmic Plastic Surgery book. I think it's just good if you can have a mental framework for what you're gonna do. You should ideally like you should know the steps you're gonna do. Like you should have already done the surgery like in your head before you go into the OR. So try to have a mental picture of what we're gonna do, and that way you'll you'll take a lot more from the surgeries if you if you do that. Um, Especially when you've never actually seen one in person. I've actually never seen an external DCR in person for whatever reason. We just never did one on my plastic rotation. Uh, we only did endo uh, DCRs. So it'll be good to see this, but I'll try to have a mental framework for it. Just review it one more time in the uh, Ophthalmic Plastic Surgery Text Techniques book. And I'll link that down below if anybody's interested in it. But uh, review that and then head inside. Okay, so it's like 9.30 now. We're just leaving the uh, the outpatient surgery center. We did two cases. One was a, um, one was uh, external DCR, which was good to see. And then the other was a, um, other was uh, external levator advancement. So that was good to see as well. She had a lot of fat infiltrating into uh, into the levator muscle, it's why she was so totic, probably. Uh, so both of those cases were pretty good to see. Now I have to run back over to the children's clinic and help with the peds retina clinic, and then there's a strap case that we'll do um, right after that. So let's go. All right, so I'm driving back over to the children's hospital. Um, got this in the mail yesterday it is from the United States Patent and Trademark Office so it's a provisional patent uh, registration for a surgical instrument that I'm trying to make um, if I ever get it made I have some prototypes made that are 3d printed uh, and I have a company working on making a, an actual like stainless steel prototype 
to test. But anyways, I have the provisional patent on it. Um, if you've ever wondered about like making your own instruments or making, you know, anything like, a, you know, surgical tools or any kind of little device and don't really know where to start, um, always a good idea to maybe go ahead and get a provisional patent. It's not, a provisional patent is not a real patent. If you hear someone say patent pending, that's what a provisional patent is. It's just a one year placeholder to register for an actual patent. An actual patent is pretty expensive. It can be thousands of dollars, but a provisional patent is just registering the idea that you have. You put draw, you know, you you upload drawings of whatever you, you're making, uh, you describe it in detail, and then you fill out, you know, a couple forms. You submit basically four PDF files to the United States Patent Office website and then you pay seventy dollars. Uh, you list yourself as a micro entity status. Call seventy dollars. You get the provisional patent. It gives you one year to basically protect the idea. So if someone else tries to file for a patent during that time, uh, you you can you know you have a, a way to fight that in court if someone were to try to steal it. So it basically gives you protection on that idea for one year to uh, file the, the patent while you're working on on the idea. So anyway, it's kind of cool to have a. The provisional patent for that now so you can work on the instrument over the course of the next year and if you know one of these instrument companies wants to license it which I have uh, one and possibly two that are at least uh, interested in helping make the prototype um, then you know we can patent it and license it to them uh, later on down the road so that's what's kind of cool that's kind of what I like to do on the side is try to make these instruments test them um, and then and then you can license them and so you can have like royalties off of you know sales or something or you can just sell it outright to a to a instrument company anyways um let's go do pediatric right now we head for the sky it's all right our wings wouldn't fly it's all right if we are crashing down again Pieces of love, it's all right. Scattered in mud, it's all right. You give and Okay, there weren't many retina patients. We saw a couple. Um, and now heading over to the OR to do the strap case. Uh, it's like 11, 15, so. Second time in the OR this morning. So, always fun to do that. Okay, well I'm done now. It's 4.20. It's the nice thing about pediatrics clinic is it goes pretty quickly normally. So we finished up with uh, glaucoma clinic at the same time the general pediatrics clinic was running. So we're seeing like post-op strap patients, there's regular general pediatric ophthalmology patients, and then uh, there's a glaucoma clinic also running at that time. Uh, so we finished with all that. 4.20 on a Friday is not too bad. Pretty good. So, um, go home now. Nobody else is doing surgery right now, so not, nothing else to go watch, really. No, like, plastics cases or anything. Anyways, um, we did get some expired IOLs, some expired um, lenses from in, uh, a big ophthalmology company. Today, they gave me some so I can kind of mess around with them. Uh, use the surgical instrument that I am working on and test it on these eye wells to see if what I made works. Um, and then I'll stick them in pig eyes and then see if this instrument can do what I need it to do. Um, more to come on that later when this is further down the line. Anyways, I'm gonna go home now. Come on, take it to the heart. 